The Lord be with you. We welcome you to the service of worship on today, the 6th of December, the second Sunday of Advent. Some notices to start with. First, um, donations to the Rose of Sharon. We can no longer collect uh, groceries for them, but we are donating money. So if you can deposit some money into the church bank account and just mark it Rose of Sharon, we will pass that on and they will use it to buy vouchers for the people in the needy communities and pass them on. We, our live services continue. We are now allowed to have 100 people at the service and we are also allowed singing as long as we keep our masks on and we keep our social distance so that if there is COVID, nobody passes it on. Please do come and join us at nine o'clock on Sunday mornings. If you'd like to come, phone the office and book. We also have Christmas coming up. The Christmas carol service is on Sunday the 13th in the evening. Um, in the garden, should be wonderful. Please phone the office, put your name down and join us for that. And then on Christmas morning, we're planning to have a combined service in the gardens again. Uh, so phone to book for that. However, on Christmas, if the weather is bad, we will move into the church and we will have two services at 7.30 and at 9.30. So when you phone to book for the garden service, we'll give you the option of a rain service as well. But please do remember, book with the office so that we can get the COVID protocols properly in line. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 85. And the psalmist writes, I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants. But let them not turn to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. The Lord will indeed give what is good, and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. The righteousness of God goes ahead of him, preparing for his coming. In Advent, we prepare for his coming as well. So, let us pray. Lord Jesus, I pray that as we look into your word, you will prepare our hearts to receive you. As we remember your coming at Christmas, we will be encouraged to live out our, our faith day by day. And as we think of your coming to us now, we will prepare for your coming in glory at the end of time. Lord, use the service to touch us and prepare us. We ask this in your name. Amen. Oh 
that you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see that you're working Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Way make miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way make miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. taken from Isaiah, chapter 40, beginning at the first verse. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, in the desert prepare the way for the Lord, Make straight in the wilderness of a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged place a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries out, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All men are like grass and all their glories like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. You who bring good tidings to Zion, go up on a high mountain. Ye who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, Lift your voice up with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid, says the towns of Judah. Here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power and his arms rule for him. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those who have young. Hear the word of the Lord. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the first chapter of the Gospel according to Mark, beginning at the first verse. The beginning of the Gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah, the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. 
This is the Gospel of Christ. Good morning, everyone. As we celebrate this second Sunday in Advent, we prepare to celebrate in a few weeks' time the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But going back about 2,000 years, as our Gospel story tells us, John the Baptist suddenly appeared coming out from the desert and preaching to the people. And what his message was, was to prepare the way for the Lord. What was about to happen was this, that the reality of God was about to come into the reality of people and challenge the reality of their true selves. So John, in doing this, is calling for repentance, calling for a cleaning out of people's lives, rather as Jesus cleansed the temple when he came. And John was acting in terms of his father's God-given prophecy when he said, And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of all their sins. And what was amazing was that John's message was heard. And this gospel story tells us that people came out from Jerusalem and all the surrounding towns and confessing their sins, they were baptized by John in the river. Except that is for the religious leaders of whom Jesus later was to say, these people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. Now what were the people confessing? What, of what had they been convicted? Certainly not of breaking the laws of the Roman authorities. No, what they were convicted of was breaking the law of God. This was the law that God had given them in the desert when they came out of Egypt. It had been written down and passed down and they knew it and they knew what was expected of them. Not vaguely, but very clearly. And they also knew what had happened to the nation before when it had been convicted of disobedience to God. And it was with that background that they now came out and they confessed their sins, not generally, but specifically to John the Baptist and to God before him. And now, as we begin to celebrate um, the coming of Christ again, just as John was preparing the way for Jesus, so we too prepare the way for Jesus now to come into our own lives, and to come into the lives and contexts of those around us. And this has a challenge to us because it means that we must be clear of what Jesus requires from us. We must have established his commands as the core values in our lives. We must aim to avoid and regularly cleanse ourselves from all those things that are not a part of his will for us. And we must do it because these things are vital in our relationship with Jesus Christ. We don't just absorb these things. They have to be looked at intentionally. We identify them specifically and personally. Jesus himself, when he was about to begin his ministry, went off into the desert. And apart from, in, in the, apart from anything else, whilst he was in the desert, he identified and confirmed the three core values that would be at the heart of his ministry. The first one was to live only according to God's word. The second was to focus only on God and not the things of the world. And the third was to trust God completely and not to try to manipulate him. 
We ourselves need to draw from Scripture, therefore, the specific values and expectations that Jesus has of us. We need to identify and own them, to note them and accept them, to commit to them, and then to pray for the Spirit's help in making them a part of our lives and living them out in our everyday lives. Jesus said, and we need to hear these words, If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands, and remain in his love. Now we need to note, we don't enter into his love by obeying his commands, but we remain in his love by obeying his commands, because it's an outworking of our faith in him. So now is a good time as we begin to look forward to the celebration of his coming when we should carry out a checklist of our own. The Gospels and the Epistles contain all the teaching we need. We go through them. We can make a list of all the qualities that should be a part of our lives and all the practices that should not. You can make the time, you know, so can I. And then we consider them before God in relation to our own life, our own personal life with Him. And then we begin to play them out and play them in as needed. We're talking of something so important here. We're talking of the Lord God Almighty and our relationship with him. We're talking of ourselves as the sons and daughters of God. We're talking of us individually and collectively as the body of Christ. And God, who is so holy and glorious and has done so much for us, deserves the very best that we can give him not to be treated casually, but to begin to make our lives shine before him as his spirit is enabled to bring out in us the qualities that are of God and to help us to turn away from everything in the world that is not. So commit yourself as I commit myself to God and to examining our lives in the weeks that lie ahead so that on Christmas morning, truly, we can welcome the Lord into our midst. So Heavenly Father, by your grace and glory, enable your Spirit to lead us deeper into the truth and may our lives shine for you. In Jesus' name, Amen.
with us, we become more aware of our own shortcomings and failures. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. In a moment of silence, let us reflect on how we have not lived according to the commandments Jesus gave. Let us call to mind our sins and shortcomings and lay them before God. So we confess. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Lord God, you inspired John when he wrote, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Thank you that you are always true to your word and that you have heard us and forgiven us. Strengthen us to walk daily in your ways. We come now to a time where we can together join in intercessory prayer for our country and our community. Let us pray. Lord God, the overriding concern we have at the moment is for the COVID second wave, which appears to be gathering momentum in parts of our country. We pray especially for the hotspots cropping up in the Eastern Cape and Western Cape. And we ask that you give us wisdom to treat the problem with the degree of seriousness it needs. We ask for a greater sense of responsibility among all people, especially in these hotspot areas. We pray now for wisdom as the holiday breaks approach and for the people who are travelling to the Eastern Cape and Western Cape for special wisdom as it pertains to the COVID outbreak. We ask you to give your guidance and help to all the first-line decision makers and support professionals, the, the doctors, the nurses, the orderlies and every person who treats suffer, sufferers in this difficult time. Give them strength, Lord and keep them safe. Give them a clear sense that they are doing something for their community that has your blessing. We thank you, thank you for what has happened so far in terms of control and we thank you that the research which is going on is bringing us ever closer to some form of treatment or prevention process. It bothers us Lord that nothing has come up yet and although there is development, there is no final solution to this pandemic. We pray too, Lord, for the seven and a half million people living with AIDS in our country and for all people involved in that health concern. We ask that you give us wisdom in this area too. Guide our people in their behaviour. Help them to understand what can be done and what behaviours help prevent the scourge. We pray particularly that our country and its politicians be aware that international aid, which is so desperately needed, depends on them maintaining good relations with the countries that so generously offer the money and antiretroviral medication. We bring to you at this time, Father, the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. This blight on our country is unacceptable to any right-thinking person. 
but we are concerned that part of the problem is inadequate controls, inadequate policing, and inadequate social per pressure on perpetrators. All these functions require better management in order to see positive results. We pray for our country's leaders. The political situation is currently a bit of a mess, but we do understand that this is your world. You remain in charge, and so we would ask that you give us the strength to make known our concerns and the courage to take stands which lead to improvements. We pray for our president. We pray for all our cabinet ministers. We pray for everyone in positions of authority that their decisions and actions may be for the benefit of all in this country and that the current culture of me first is gradually eliminated. We pray for our country's young people, especially those who are just finishing the trick. If they choose to go to some of the matric graves that are going on, help them to understand the risks involved and help those who are trying to work in these areas to do so with compassion and care. Here these are prayers which we offer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you that you have promised where two or more meet in your name, you are there with them. And we have met in your name in spirit, even though we have been scattered around the world. And so we thank you that you have been with us. Go with us into the rest of this day. Go with us into the rest of our week. Go with us into the world, we pray. May God the Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son, give you grace to prepare for life eternal. May God the Son, who comes to us as Redeemer and Judge, reveal to you the path from darkness to light. May God the Holy Spirit, by whose working the Virgin Mary conceived the Christ, help you bear the fruits of holiness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you, those whom you love, this day and always. Amen.
Your love has rescued me. Your love has rescued me.